we are at the cusp of an AI-led revolution that is not only going to change the way that humans communicate in the future, but it's actually also going to change the way that humans think about what is real or not in the future. This AI revolution starts with something that is more commonly known as a deep fake. And you might have already heard the word, but what a deep fake is, is essentially a piece of synthetic or fake media that's been manipulated or generated by artificial intelligence. It can be a video, it can be an image, it can even be a piece of audio. This amazing ability of AI to literally create fake media is a cutting edge development that's only been possible for the last five years or so. And what AI is particularly good at is at creating fake media of people. Look at each of these people, for instance. Can you tell which one was created by AI and doesn't actually exist? So if you chose the boy, you're right. If you chose the woman, you're right. And if you chose the man, you are right too. So it's actually a bit of a trick question. None of these people exist. They're all deep fakes generated by AI. And AI is actually also very good at creating fake media of people who do exist even if they're dead. So here is the legend, the artist, Salvador Dali. He's been dead for over 30 years, but there's something he wants to say to you about death today. But there is one thing that makes me different. I do not believe in my death. Do you? So Dali doesn't believe in his death, especially because AI can make him say that now. This is a synthetic creation. Obviously, the real Salvador Dali never filmed this video. If I hadn't primed you and told you that that Dali video was a fake, could you have believed it was real? Um, and the truth is many people would have. Because as humans, we're actually wired to want to believe something if it looks or sounds right. It's actually a cognitive bias, which is known as a processing fluency. And it should come as no surprise, therefore, that the ability to do visual manipulation is an extremely powerful tool that has been used as a weapon throughout history. This guy, the, the Soviet dictator, Joseph Stalin, one of potentially the worst bad actors of the 20th century was a keen proponent. As he had his enemies eliminated one by one in the great purges of the 1930s, he simultaneously had them unpersoned or removed from photographs. But it was very difficult to do in those days. It took days of labor by an especially skilled craftsperson. But now modern technology is making media manipulation easier, cheaper, and more accessible. First there was Photoshop, then came photo editing smartphone apps, then was Instagram filters for video, and now we have deep fakes. Here's a deep fake that's gone viral recently. It's of Tom Cruise and it's from TikTok. It's made headlines all across the world because it is so good. And this wasn't made by a Hollywood studio. This was made by one deep fake artist. Hey, listen up, sports and TikTok fans. If you like what you're seeing, just wait till it's coming next. So processing fluency tells you that that's Tom Cruise. It looks like him and it sounds like him, but it's not. It's a deep fake. And it's especially important to note that deep fakery, which is the most powerful form of visual manipulation, is emerging at a time when visual media, and especially video, are becoming the most important mediums of human communication. Think about this. Last year in 2020, we, humanity, took 1.4 trillion photos. 
just to give you a sense of how large that number is, if I were to take a photo every second and I didn't stop, it would still take me 45,000 years to take 1.4 trillion photos. By next year, video streaming and downloads is going to account for over 80% of internet traffic. And by 2023, over 5.6 billion, two thirds of humanity, 75% of every human that lives on earth is going to be consuming, producing and sharing photos and video content online. And increasingly, a lot more of them are going to be deep fakes. According to some experts, up to 90% of video content will be synthetically generated by the end of the decade. That is a punchy statistic, but I think it's fair to say by 2030, we're looking at a scenario where one YouTuber or one TikToker can create deep fake content that is just as good as, or even better than anything a Hollywood studio can create today, even with their teams of um, special effects artists and multi-million dollar budgets. And entire industries from entertainment to marketing to communications to advertising are going to be completely transformed as synthetic media increasingly becomes the norm when it comes to media production. But we are still at the very start of that journey. Most of the deepfake output that you or I could make today is still fairly rudimentary. It's definitely not on the level of the Tom Cruise TikTok video I showed you or the Salvador Dali we saw earlier. It's more like this deep fake, which I made of myself singing Edith Piaf's Je ne regrette rien. So it's definitely not as good as Tom Cruise or Dolly, but actually it's still really impressive, especially when you consider that it took me two seconds to make this. I did it on my smartphone by uploading a single still image of myself into a deepfake app, and I actually got it for free. So while there are still barriers to creation when it comes to deepfakes, the direction of travel is in clear, direction of travel is clear, but they are coming down and this technology is increasingly going to become accessible to everyone. So to my mind, there is no doubt. We are at the start of an AI-led paradigm change. And I say with full confidence that the future is synthetic. Now, that synthetic future is very exciting. As I already mentioned, entire industries are gonna be transformed. It's a boon for creativity. There's gonna be many opportunities for investment, but as somebody who has a political background, it's obvious that that synthetic future holds risks too. Especially because if everything can be faked, then anything can be dismissed as fake, even if it's not. This is a phenomenon that's known as the liar's dividend, and we're actually already beginning to see it at play. More and more commonly, authentic media and authentic video, which used to be seen as almost a perception of, as an extension of your own perception, is more commonly being decried as deep fake. Take, for example, the George Floyd death video. It was so visceral that it united millions of people together in protest, right? Not only in the United States, but across the world. But even I was surprised at how quickly that video was dismissed by a deep fake and by a really unlikely candidate too. Dr. Winnie Hartstrong is a PhD holding African-American woman who is standing to be elected to the US House of Representatives who released uh, earlier last year a 24 page report into why the entire George Floyd video was a deep fake hoax. And she actually started an active public campaign to argue that it had never happened. So the synthetic future raises some profound philosophical questions about the future of humanity. Most importantly, if there is no way to distinguish between the authentic and the synthetic, and our future is increasingly going to become one where we're inundated with synthetic media, 
just as visual media is becoming the most important medium of human communication, then how are we going to know what's real? We're entering an era of profound technology-led change, and we will arguably experience more change in a single lifetime than the entirety of humanity that's come before us. And the only way to prepare for this period of change is by beginning to understand the enormity of the paradigm change that is underway. And that's actually what I am dedicated to trying to do, especially with regards to our synthetic future. And I welcome you to reach out to me if this interests you too. Thank you for sharing your time with me today. It's been a real pleasure to be here.